Well, hello everybody, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo TA wrap. We take a look at these markets, we do it from a neoclassical perspective each time, asking ourselves what happened today, what does it tell us about the coming ones. I do the show four times a week, every Monday through Thursday, broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube under the channel L.A. Little. You can catch it there, subscribe, content's pushed, you'll be notified. Also do a show on Sundays, broader perspective, looking at the weekly, the monthly charts, looking at the bigger picture. As far as these markets and uh, what happened today, well, it was a strong day today, actually, and uh, we had a push pretty much across the board. Other than the dollar selling down some, pretty much everything else was up, oil was off a little bit. Silver spiked pretty good, gold, more continuation there. You actually had bonds higher but still wallowing at the lows. 1% plus moves across the board in the indexes, and all you'll hear about tonight is the SPX, a new closing high. That doesn't mean it's broken out of the range, but the close itself was at the top of the bar, therefore it is at a new high. So when we look at the indexes, you know, we've got the, a pretty good story going on again, and the question is, is are they going to break this thing out or not? So let's pop in here, take a look at them. Uh, this is the S&Ps to start with. You know, S&P is at the top of the range. There's, you know, I, I cannot argue with a market that keeps trying, <laughs> and this one keeps trying. I mean, it's it's got this, this range going on. It's right at the very top of the range, going to try to break it out tomorrow. Uh, swing points, a uh, swing point high here, and one over here still that haven't been broken. So let's uh, actually let's get the numbers on those. This one is uh, 21.1959. We close at 21.21. So we break that one. We're going after the top one now. Volume really not there, but you know right now it doesn't. You know, in this market. You've got a strong trend, consolidation for a long period of time. If they can break over the highs, they can break over the highs, and they can get a little bit more of a push. The issue isn't here. The issue is elsewhere, and that is, is that even if this breaks out tomorrow and holds, you've got some serious divergence pretty much everywhere else. So in other words, if we go look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ hasn't even got back to the highs. So in other words, you could break out on the S&Ps, stay over the highs on the S&Ps, and still just be trying to come up to the highs on what were the stronger indexes previously. NDX, same story, still trying to come up to the highs, and the Russell, same, even worse, but same story. The Russell did get back over the breakdown bar today. So now the Russell's done two things. One is it's gotten over this bar. That was a key hurdle to get over, and it's over it now. And the next one, is to get back into and do a, a retest regenerate. Now it's been way more than six bars, so typically when you come into the bottoms of these, that's about all you can expect. Now if that is true on the Russell, and all you can expect is into this little area here, maybe about as high as there, then what does that mean? That means that S&Ps are gonna get up to their highs, right, and then just roll back over because the Russell itself would roll back over if that's the case. So I would be watching this particular index. It seems like this index for a good two years almost has been probably the best read on this market time and time again. But the story really isn't just in the indexes even though we started with those tonight. The story still is in the bonds, it's in the currencies, and it's in the overseas markets. And when I come back, we'll take a look at those. At Tea Today, we have many services that teach trading to our clients. You can use LA's tools to trade and or learn how to trade alongside LA using his neoclassical methodology. To earn these free services with no subscription or charge, go to our homepage, click on either the Tools and Earn Free Services or Trade with LA and Earn Free Services. On this page, you can refer a friend. Fill out information about yourself and the friend you are referring, 
and you will earn up to three months of free service with no charge as long as your friend continues to be a subscriber. So remember, refer one friend and earn up to three months of free service with us. The more people you refer that sign up, the more months you earn. If you have any questions, let us know. Thanks from the TA Today team, bringing you tools and ideas to help you trade. Okay, as we come back here, before we pop over to the uh, the bonds and the currencies, I wanted to look at the XLF because the financial sector is trying to break out as well. It's gotten over the swing point high tonight. Uh, that's going to uh, give it another transition, actually a reconfirmation of an upside trend. If you look at it on the weekly, it's at that swing point high as well. And doesn't look like it's going to have the volume. No, it's not going to have the volume. So even if it gets over it, it's going to be... Uh, uh, less volume, but it's attacking the highs and, and for this market to move and stay higher You've got to have some of these major sectors pushing up and it can't be just technology all the time. So Important sector. It's up there. It's pushing highs uh, That's another one uh, to be watching if we pop over to the ox sectors and let's go to the dollar You know the dollar pushes lower today it actually tried to reverse today, has less volume, but it did close under it on a daily chart. We're going into the weekend on this time frame. You know, it's still trying to get back to this 2443 uh, number. It's sitting at about 2455, so another 13 points. Uh, doesn't have the volume, isn't going to have the volume. So, you know, if you're a bull, you'd actually like to see it get under that, stay over it and uh, basically fell on that test. Uh, right now, you know, the dollar is, is helping U.S. large cap stocks. That's why the S&P is doing as well as it is. And it's, um, uh, to some extent, it's still hurting other countries, you know, where those currencies are, are rising. Now, where that isn't hurting as much is in those currencies where the devaluations, you know, the expectation of those devaluations is going to continue. And so, you know, if we look at Europe, we look at China, not so much China, but uh, Japan, some of those, yeah, they're coming off some, but, uh, you know, and we'll look at those next, but they're not really getting beat up too bad like, uh, um, say, uh, like Taiwan or, or, you know, any of the other countries, right? They're, you know, India, some of these others. They're the ones that are getting hurt worse. And they're even cutting their rates uh, if you're keeping up with it. You know, it's about 30 countries have cut rates so far this year. That's how dramatic it is. Bonds. If we look at the bonds, the bonds push down. They don't test yesterday's low. They just miss it. That low was 118.64. Uh, they got down to 118.69, I think. Yeah, 118.69. No volume. Sellers look like they're starting to dry up down here. If you look at it on the weekly, it's under the big bar. Tomorrow is going to be a, a key test in that, you know, does this thing finally reverse and come back up and get back inside this bar? Now, on a weekly basis, and that was uh, one of the viewer questions, I'll just attack it now. On a weekly basis, this market's already done and on the weekly. It's already done the ABCD structure to the downside and has finished. And that, and that finish was right about where that was. It's extended a little bit beyond it, uh, but that's the number. And the viewer question was, okay, why did you draw this as you did? And so I'm going to draw in red what he's wondering about. And that is, is that, you know, shouldn't this be to here, back up and then back down? And I drew it that way once by accident. And the reason for this, and, and I've talked about this uh, in other places and, and, and here on the show before too, is that in neoclassical, right, if you're doing the neoclassical drill, you always want to do what is the um, most conservative measurement when you're doing a projection, right? And, and the reason for that is, you know, you want to know, you know, kind of, the, the worst case scenario of how far something can go. And so what I always look for, and what I look for in ABCD structures, is I want to know, 
you know, when this thing, this thing comes down, when do I see a move where the high, and in this case we're coming down, where the high is higher than the previous bar's high, and the low is higher than the previous bar's low. As soon as I see that, that says I've got a B point, right? That's my B point right there. So my A's up here, my B is here, and then I actually got a little, you know, if I were to draw this at the time, I got a little move and this was trying to extend down, okay? And if you can imagine that you don't have this over here yet, and you're only looking at this, right? What does that look like, right? As a matter of fact, if I just uh, take and cover that up, you know, if you if you look at it like that, right? Clean that up and do it again, right? If you're looking at it at this point in time, that's exactly what it looks like, right? There's an A, a B, a C, and you're starting back down right that's exactly how it looks and that's exactly what's going on now subsequently this thing gets down here and bounces right so now what are we going to do we're going to count this no that would wipe out this ABCD structure no your B points really here your B is there you come back up now you do the ABCD right and this is just basically ignored it's failed it didn't it didn't project I mean it projected far but it didn't cut it didn't carry so it's aborted, you come back up, now you've got another one, and now because it came up higher, right, the projection's lower. I mean, I mean, it's higher up, it's not as low. And so, you know, this area here, when you're doing ABCD projections, on a, on a uh, percentage basis is going to be equal to that one. This one's going to be equal to this one. That's how this thing works. And so it finished it off, right, now it's trying to turn, hasn't been able to yet. Tomorrow's, to me, is a key day. If we look over at the German bonds, the Bund itself, it also rallied some today. It uh, was rallying this afternoon. Uh, we'll see how it does today uh, or tomorrow. Uh, that key market, right? That's where you had a huge backup in rates. That was kind of what freaked everything out last week. Now that those bonds have at least settled, right? They're not just dropping like rocks anymore. Then, then the, the dollar hasn't pushed higher. What happens? Oh, well, hell, let's go back into risk. Let's go back into the equities, and that's what they did today. And tomorrow will be a continuation of that uh, if, in fact, uh, this uh, continues, and it looks like it probably will. If we look overseas real quick and uh, pop up, let me grab the charts. We can start in Europe and uh, with the CACs, right? So now I'm on the daily. The CACs gets a nice bounce back up. You know, the CAC still has this ABCD, not the ABCD, it has this retest regenerate up here, right? Plus this one down here. Remember, this one down here, it got over. Okay, so when it gets over it, what does that do? Well, that's a nice indication that this thing wants to go more sideways. In other words, it's building its range. It's what I've talked about for a while. That's, you know, breaking this back over it. That's a confirmation that that's what's going on. It's range trading. Now that it came back down into this area and could not test this low, suggests that it is going to push back up and try to test this low next. Even without the volume. That's what it's going to try to do. So I would expect you're going to see this try to hit this low. That's probably where it's trying to head back to. Go back and test this, test that. Push back up there and test it again. What is it doing is range trading, folks. It's just simply range trading. You've got the big range inside of it. You have the kind of a divider here. And it's, uh, it's just simply going back up and trying to test into that area and see if it can get into it. If it does and holds it, then it could try to go to the top again, touch the top of the range. That's the CACs. If we look at the DAX, which has been weaker, DAX also doing the same thing, no volume, doing the same thing. Now, the DAX hasn't shown us a breakdown of a prior swing point low. So my, my thought this time, given the way this is set up, is you're going to see it get back in and try to get back up into this area. That's kind of where it is. That's the breakdown bar. That seems to be the target here. So tomorrow I would not be surprised or even early next week 
for the DAX to try to make it back to here. I suspect on the first trip back it probably fails there, probably brings the CACs back with it. Now I had another viewer uh, in Germany asking me uh, to, to look at the mid-cap, the DAX, and I don't have the data in our chart so I popped over to another one, investing.com, to look at it there. And I'm on a daily, you wanted to look at the daily and the weekly. Uh, let's look at the daily first. So you got a hammer reversal with volume. So the first thing to notice here, just like on the DAX itself, you got volume at the bottom. That says this thing can come back. Okay, now, because I don't have all the nice things written for you, I'll draw them out for you. Here's a swing point low that was broken here. That break, right, now you're doing the retest, regen, bearish, trying to break it back down. Well, it looks to me like it's about to get over. It probably gets over it tomorrow. That turns this sideways and says, hey, the mid caps, right, those guys are probably going to trade sideways on the daily time frame. And what does that suggest? Well, it suggests it's going to come back into this area. This here is a swing point low as well. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. No, it didn't. No swing point low there. Got under it right here. So it is going to probably come back and try to attack that breakdown bar. So where would I draw that support or that resistance? I would think it's going to be right in there. That's where this thing's probably trying to head to on this time frame. Let's pull it on the weekly and see what the weekly looks like. So you got volume there. Yeah, and this, this looks very much like the, the main index. Um, I don't see I don't see anything worrisome here. You're simply building out a range, right? And this one has kind of a you know two two ranges inside. It's coming back up trying to get in the top range. So that, that all looks fine. If it breaks down farther, right, you could get a push down to here and even farther would bring you back down into here. I don't expect that. I expect maybe, you know, worst case in my mind is you get to here. But honestly, I don't even think you're going to get there. You might get to this bar. That's the mid caps. Let's look at, um, let's go back over here and look at the rest of uh, the world. Let's look at Asia real quick. Uh, Hong Kong, uh, still hanging. And actually, Hong Kong, this looks like a reversal. It looks like it's going to trade higher tonight. 27,191. Uh, no, it didn't. Didn't get under it. So, still just testing. Still testing. Nothing, nothing there yet. Let's look at the Nikkei right quick. And on the Nikkei, really nothing here either. And the Hang Seng was, uh, not the Hang Seng, but the uh, Shanghai was up a little bit today. Nothing there either. So... It looks to me like Asia is going to try to drift a little bit higher, but that, that's really a question mark. And I only say that because the U.S. markets are doing it. And, you know, I suspect it'll bleed over there. The real test tomorrow, to me, is going to be back in Europe. Europe looks like it's going to trade higher. That's going to help U.S. equities trade higher as well. There's really not much in the way of news tomorrow. A couple of things out. Uh, it looks to me like we're going to drift up tomorrow. Close out the week on a positive note. Get everybody all excited for the following week. Hooray, hooray, right? The market that won't quit. Folks, thank you for joining me. Have a great night. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you Sunday night when we do the weekly wrap. Take care. Good night.